the beauty, the beauty of uh, songs and music and dance and all of those things are that it connects you a lot to God if you allow it to. And, uh, and that's why before the group, before the break, remember you asked Peter about the emotions that occur in a Pentecostal church, for example. And you can see what it does. It just buoys you up and you have all this joy. And then if you really have a longing for God in that process, then God's love, of course, can flow into you in that process and you feel quite, quite strong. That, that was um, leading on to my question. And... and <laughs> And uh, I, I, my observations when I was reading the Paget messages was that uh, Paget had a background um, that was fairly intellectual, and so he wasn't a, a, a deeply. It, it, I didn't get the impression he was deeply emotional um, all the time. But I just wondered, like, it, and it, it seemed obvious that he did receive a lot of divine love because he kept getting told that he was getting filled up with it over and over again. Does the question is? Does divine love always feel um, approximately the same when someone receives it or can it come in different forms and, and can you actually receive it without even realising it? Or um, Well, let's answer the last question first. Um, yes, you can receive it without realising it, but most of the time it's a very emotional process that you're just unaware of. Um, so, so you're unaware of why you're crying, you're just crying and sobbing and you can't really understand inside of yourself why intellectually. But once you start realising what it's about in a conscious manner, then you can obviously replicate that process. The, the issue that most, that most Pentecostal movements have is that, is that they have a trouble replicating the process beyond a certain point because you, as you have longings for God's love to enter you, obviously your love enters you, but eventually your love enters you until the point where you're pretty much full of the love itself and, and there's only times of faith that it, you raise above that condition for a little bit more to enter you. But the rest of the time you're trying to suppress your emotions, so trying to suppress your false beliefs and false desires and all of these other things that affect you spiritually. And as a result of that, um, you often are in a state where, um, where you're no longer receiving divine love. So what a lot of people experience when on the divine love path is they, they come against the pageant messages or they come against the divine the truth they feel this passionate longing for God open up in them because they have this desire for truth in them. They open that up, they receive divine love over a period of days up until the point when they've sort of topped up as much as they can be without releasing some emotional beliefs or some, uh, some belief systems, emotions or, or uh, you know, desires that are disharmonious with love. And so it, it hits the wall of our personal will, our resistance. So what happens is we receive the love, receive the love and then it hits the wall of our resistance. And once it hits the wall of our resistance, it's very difficult after that point to receive more. And so most people, um, even in the uh, Pentecostal movements, for example, most people, they receive the love and then they think they receive the love because of their beliefs. Mm. But they actually receive the love because of their beliefs. They receive the love in spite of their beliefs <laughs> and because of their passionate desire for it in that moment. And, uh, and because they don't understand that, they receive the love to a certain point and then they call themselves, you'll hear the term often, they call themselves saved. Born again. Right? Born again. And what they do is they equate the process of receiving divine love to the point where they're topped up as being born again. So they feel they've gone through this process of being born again. The reality is that for the majority of them, they've only had one topping of divine love until they've hit resistance and then because they are un unwilling then they don't know how to release their resistance to the rest of the love flowing and they're not yet born again they've just received some divine love but they sort of remember it as an experience they remember it as a complete sort of experience that they always refer back to and it in many times keeps them bound to the religion that they experience that experience in what happens when they walk out the front and the, the preacher goes up and says, you know, by the love of God or whatever, I forget the words, you go bang and hit you on the head and you just go down like a ton of bricks. <laughs> well, that is a not so pleasant thing going on and it's actually to do with spirit possession. The problem with um, many Pentecostal movements is that basically you're opening yourself up to what they would term the spirit. Now, what they don't understand and what's, what's sort of misquoted in the Bible is that many of these so-called spiritual gifts 
are not so much gifts but rather they are spirits connecting with you in times of heightened emotions within yourself and heightened spiritual reflection inside of yourself. And many people in that state are highly mediumistic. So you have a spirit in that state take you over. And I've been along to some of these places where you actually can see the spirit interfering with them. Sometimes the spirit's making them flop around on the floor even. Is that what speaking in tongues is? And often the speak, yeah, mo almost all speaking in tongues is actually about an overcloaking of a spirit starting to babble in a different language. And unfortunately, many times it's actually a spirit in quite poor condition. What, um, what's the motivation of the spirit to want to do that? Well, the motivation of the spirit is to get some connection to the earth and have some power over people. The motivation of the person is to get the approval of their audience and feel like they're full of the spirit, when in reality they're full of a spirit, but it's just not the spirit <laughs> they're hoping it is, right? So they're actually not full of the Holy Spirit or God's spirit. So yeah, and, there's, and there's also a misconception of God's spirit itself. They view God's spirit as an entity or a thing that possesses them, when in reality God's spirit is the conduit via which the divine love can enter you and possess you. So, so the, the reality is a, a lot of these false beliefs then manipulate the, what, what happens in the, in the service. And as a result of that, um, many people misconceive what's going on and they allow things that are actually sometimes quite damaging to their own soul and to, the, and to themselves. Mm. And it's all due to the false belief system that man has created that we can't sort out the difference between what's, what was happening in a pure way and what was happening in an impure way. And many times if you started babbling in a different language, for example, right, and then could translate that language on top of that into... Now, a lot of people might go to you to do that, right? But can you see how your own addiction to power or glory or all these other kind of things can hook into that? And before you know it, you've got an audience who are listening to you. And imagine there was a congregation who knew you quite well. They'd always be looking at you to have this, this, this emanation of the spirit come out of you. And all of a sudden you change and you become a different person. Say all these words and everything. One goes, wow, isn't she amazing? She must be really connected to the spirit. You know? And in reality, all that's happening is she's a medium who happens to be in that moment connecting to a spirit of various conditions. Mm. And this is the damaging thing uh, about a lot, of, a lot of what goes on, is that because no one really understands the full truth of what's going on in the, in the service itself, there's a lot of acceptance of what's going on without actually looking at what's behind. When you can see the spirits who are present, then you can see actually there are bright spirits present many times, but there are also quite dark spirits many times present as well. And it just depends on the person's individual soul condition as to which one of those spirits connects to them individually and also what that spirit then does while they take possession of the person. And in reality, what a lot of these religions condemn, which is spirit possession, which they condemn quite strongly, they are actually sh demonstrating in their own services. Mm. So, so that's uh, the sad part of it, but there are a lot of very positive parts of it, obviously. One of them is that songs like that, um, that we've just been listening to, particularly the second song, which basically all the way through it has no untruth in it um, and talks about God's love raining down on you. Um, that Songs like that have also been created by that, by, by that movement, which is fantastic because that, that's a very powerful way to connect to God's love. 